Well, hello there. Come on in. I'm Chris Brown. I'm your humble chimney sweep. I was just going over your chimney inspection report, but now that you're here, make yourself comfortable. Let's go over it together, shall we? Okay, now let's take a look at the inspection report and see how it reads out. This is a generic report. This is exactly what you will get, only your information obviously will be filled into all these blanks. The upper right hand corner of the report is the legend. Each one of these initials pertain to something. A is consistent with the age of the chimney. B, C comments below. C, repairs needed. D, need further evaluation or E, not applicable. And they're placed into the boxes next to the parts of the chimney that can be easily identified in this diagram. And then of course you'll find my comments here below. Now let's take a look at your particular, your personal report. So stay with me. Hey, Aubrey, I went uh, out to the King, uh, South King Drive property today. This is the second of these uh, chimneys I've looked at uh, that are being built over here. I believe there's four units uh, being built. Uh, okay, so I met with the builder who let me in and very nice uh, gentleman, uh, very personable. Um, open wood burning fireplace. This is what we found inside. Open wood burning fireplace has a gas log lighter. Remember gas log lighters use a key valve. That uh, is because you can take the key out and tuck it away someplace. Remember that gas log lighters do not have pilots. Uh, when you use this you put your grate and your wood on top of the grate, put a little paper underneath there, light the paper ahead of time, then turn the gas on. No pilot. So you don't want to have a problem uh, filling the house up with natural gas, trying to light one of those uh, bics, and then you know the next thing you know you're blown into the next room. That would be pretty frightening. Uh, also remember you don't have to use it. That is not under pressure in the firebox area. It's from the gas pressure is actually from the key back towards the meter. So no problems with that. Missing some mortar. Uh, both the fireplaces that I've looked at uh, missing mortar. Um, uh, at the surround here we call this a profile it's where the surround meets the fireplace itself it needs to be repaired for safety and I wrote uh, that into your paperwork I pointed it out to the uh, builder he said he was aware of this one and the other one that I looked at and that he was going to take care of it the dampers working no problems with that this issue with the flu system is the same issue with the other one uh, my biggest concern uh, with this fireplace uh, is this screen. It's below the pot. Uh, if you don't think birds will, this is in essence looking down someone else's pot a bunch of years ago, uh, birds will uh, build nests on that screen and cause the gases to go back into the house. Screen must be removed on uh, that fireplace and the other one that I looked at and the builder said he was going to do that. Up on top we like the way it looks. It's a beautiful uh, chimney and you know a good alternative to this would be maybe a standard cap. Remember chimney caps are not code required in the state of North Carolina and that they don't have to be installed but they do keep the water out of the system. A traditional pot cap will keep the water out and keep the birds out and a great alternative to the screen because the screen even if the creatures don't nest uh, on top of it uh, creates drag. State of North Carolina says if you're going to use screen you need to use four times the size of the opening. This is the size of the opening so you can see it's clearly one times the size of the opening. So that's going to cause drag. It's going to cause smoke to come back into the house. Uh, I want to address the size of the flu systems. Um, I brought this up on the other house. Uh, the builder is aware of this. He uh, provided some information uh, actually I think it was out of my own um, code book that I sent the chapter to him but either which way it's his books are current and so are mine um, when we built chimneys and I've lined uh, over a hundred I can't tell you how many between 1980 and 1992 I've been in this business since 1980 if we had an oversized fireplace opening like this we would put an oversized flue system in it so that it would draw up properly. The argument is that you have so much air coming into the opening of the fireplace mixing with the smoke 
that if you don't have it properly sized, uh, some of the smoke would go up the chimney, but some of it would belch back into the house. So when I look up these fireplaces and I see a standard size flue, not an oversized, but a standard size flue, which is meant for a 3630 or a standard fireplace opening, this remember is oversized, it automatically uh, raises a red flag for me. In the old days, we, would have, we wouldn't have done it this way, but the codes are clear that there is an alternative to that, and, um, and your builder did point it out to me, that as long as the chimney is a certain height, in other words, the higher the chimney, uh, the better the draft, and that's to some extent that is true, uh, will overcome the smaller flue system in here. So I, I have no doubt that to get a certificate of occupancy, the uh, chimney will not hold up that process. I think that uh, it's clear that the uh, building inspector will come to that same conclusion because he has a current set of, of code books too. And he would not have seen the screen, by the way, so I'm glad we're having this uh, thing inspected because that would have really led to problems down the, uh, down the pathway. So that is what it is. Always remember that the codes, your humble chimney sweep operates on experience, which is 40 years, and the codes. That's all I have to operate with. And uh, so uh, if it meets code, then uh, that is the definitive answer. The um, building inspector has the final say over whether it, it, it does meet it or it doesn't meet it. And I'm, I'm pretty convinced that he's going to decide that it does meet code. So with all that being said, questions for me, give me a call 704-526-6348. You can email me at chris at affordablesweep.com. Thank you.